Okay, so hello everybody. Welcome to the uh, first uh, Media Ed Graduate uh, Symposium. Um, this is an idea that um, came back um, from work of several years that we've been doing with several of the folks that are on this call. Um, like, uh, I think I saw Michelle and uh, Mike and Salome. Um, we had like a group um, that was really supportive and helpful. And I feel like for myself as well, um, 13 years ago, I found the Media Education Lab and that support that I received as a community of learners being like a PhD. So yes, I had the privilege to be the PhD student of Rene Hobbes. So that's nice that I have somebody who is an expert in the field. Uh, but it was also helpful to talk with other um, graduate students about different methods, different things that sometimes are out of the scope of the mentors or the committee or people who are teaching uh, the classes and feel that I have an international community to talk to. So that's why we're here. Uh, but as we're rebranding the Media Education Lab, we redid the website six months ago. I'm going to go over that uh, shortly. Um, we realized that people uh, want to um, be part of like this um, community. And there are different re um, reasons to people to join. So this is why this first session will be a little bit different than all the upcoming sessions that we're going to have. So just to share uh, like here. Um, so as we advertise, I thought about at least six sessions that can be helpful for graduate students in the field of media literacy. First, to understand what are the theoretical frameworks of uh, media uh, education. Um, to understand the roots of critical media literacy, uh, to talk about news, information, and digital literacy. Um, how do you impact policy with your research? What are ethical and legal consideration? And working with educational setting that can be very, very challenging. And sometimes too late in the PhD or MA process, um, we're learning about those challenges sometimes. So it's helpful to know it ahead of time. Now, this was the initial thought as I was thinking about having a group of graduate students who are specifically working on research on media literacy. Since we advertise and open this uh, graduate symposium to anybody in the community that wants to join, we have different people here that have different um, reasons to join, different ambitions, different things to do. So. This part that I'm talking now is an introductory to the whole concept, but as we're going to move to the second and third part today, what I want to do is kind of a participatory um, activity to understand who is coming and who is interested in it. Because from what I've seen and from the application, not everybody is just interested to get like, you know, talking about their research in media literacy. Some do, some don't. And so I want to see if maybe we break it into several working groups, into what are the different interests and how people want to uh, contribute and be part of this community. So in order to do that, those six sessions are going to start uh, from uh, a month from now. So the first session that was supposed to be today about the theoretical framework, I'm going to move it to a month from now. Not all the meetings will be the same day, the same time. I did it for the first two. And then we'll see, because we're trying with different time zones with people from different places in the world, which is very exciting. But I'm sure that um, in Asia and Australia, it's super, super late. But it's very early in the West Coast. So, you know, trying to kind of like finding a time that would work for everybody. So that's something also to discuss. But going back to the, the previous slide, um, that might be relevant for graduate students. M that might be less uh, relevant for people who practitioners who want to do other stuff with this group or create their own group, which they're welcome because we're a community of learners and we want to encourage that. So that's kind of the introduction to it. Now, just to give you also for those, I mean, I see a lot of familiar faces and it might be kind of redundant, but still, um, 
just to put it uh, out there. So I became the executive director of the Media Education Lab after being, again, graduate students, manager, assistant director and everything uh, last year. And I was, as I said, a PhD student of Rene at uh, Temple University, then University of Rhode Island. I'm now teaching at Columbia College Chicago. I'm an associate professor. I'm the graduate director um, at the college. I created two master programs, one in strategic communication and one in media for social impact. And um, you can see on the page for those who are interested in those programs, what they're offering. One is fully online, media for social impact. Uh, it was called civic media, but we understood that people don't understand what civic media is, which is going to be part of discussion in a month from now that I'm going to talk also about this concept. Um, but always happy to talk about graduate studies and to mentor. I'm uh, flying on Sunday um, to Europe. I have two PhD students there, one in Oslo, one in Spain, that I'm on their committee. So again, those are things that um, we find ourselves at the Media Education Lab mentoring the next leaders in the field. And I feel like, you know, it's kind of paid forward. Like I was um, given this opportunity to be mentored by Rene and others at the lab. And that's my way of like giving back. So um, Rene, I think most of you know, work at the University of Rhode Island. She founded the Media Education Lab 20 years ago. She's one of the biggest uh, scholar, established a journal of media literacy uh, education. Um, She's also getting ready for the trip. We're gonna, uh, there is the International Media Literacy Research Symposium in the Azores. So that's why she cannot uh, join us uh, today, but she might come for some of the uh, meetings uh, later on. The Media Education Lab, um, I'm always asked to come and see our amazing facilities. And I'm saying here, you're welcome. It's my office. Uh, the Media Education Lab is more a state of mind the way we say it. And since I moved from University of Rhode Island to Connecticut and to um, Columbia College Chicago, uh, we really made it as a community that is mainly online, especially during the pandemic. Um, so when you think about the Media Education Lab, you really need to think about it as a group of people who are contributing to each other and want to share with each other. Now, as we revise the, the uh, um, the website, um, and you can see some of it here, uh, we made sure that the website express what the Media Education Lab is. So I'm giving you this overview, even to those who know the Media Education Lab, because this is part of what we're gonna do at the third part today, when you're thinking about which group you want to be part of and how you want to benefit of being part of this community. So the Media Education Lab, uh, you can see here that we're doing a lot of different events. You have our free our free events, uh, which are at least one or two per uh, per week. But we also have the media club once a month talking about media texts uh, that Francia, who I think is here, uh, is leading. We have the Media Ed Forum, which is our online two day conference, which is twenty five dollars, which uh, Michelle was one of the the leaders there. Um, and uh, this is in January, uh, January 10 and January 11. And we have um, uh, Anastasia here, who is going to be part of the planning uh, committee. So again, thank you for being here. Um, we have the Institute, uh, which is our professional development. Some of you took it in person, online, in different versions. We're now expanding the Media Ed Institute into micro-credential courses. Two courses are gonna be offered in uh, a month from now. Uh, one on fear-based thinking because of the elections and the way that media creates fear for us. And another one is the second part of teaching the conspiracy. Uh, so there was the first one, but you don't need to do the first one to do the second one. The first one was more historical conspiracy theory, like moon landing. And then the, the second part is about uh, current conspiracy theories and what's happening now, and how do you teach this kind of thing in the classroom? Um, so the research jam is something to do a year from now. We're gonna do an in-person hybrid uh, research accelerator, basically. It's for people who develop their research to have a place, not submit something for their current research. It's something they want to do. It's to um, 
inspire collaboration and especially for graduate students. So that's going to happen in a little bit more than a year from now. We're thinking of September 25. Um, and the free webinar series. There's a lot of resources. The amount of resources here is crazy because it's more than 20 years of work that you can go and find different things about different topics. We give obviously uh, services and there is different research that you can see. So the teaching resources, you can click on it. There's the highlighted one, which we're gonna talk about set your motivation shortly. That's the activity we're gonna do. And then the services we're doing, but you have our publications and um, you also have all the different topics that we put there that have what kind of webinar we did about it. So you have online recording about it, you have teaching resources, and you have also research. So I'll just click on the first one, accessibility and inclusion. And then you're getting into what events, and you can go in and see the recording. You can see the research about it, and you can see teaching resources about accessibility and inclusion. And then you have the list of all the other ones if you want to click on them. So basically, just back to like the uh, Media Education Lab, we're a community that is, um, again, all of us are volunteering and uh, we're doing it because we're passionate about it, because that's part of we feeling that it's something that is important for what we're doing. And the idea of what I want to convey in the second and third part, and I'm going to stop the recording shortly, is to understand each one of you. Why are you here? What are your motivation? What would you want to get out of it? But additionally, because this is basically we're giving you like free mentoring for graduate students, we want you to pay back for the lab and not monetarily, uh, but to think about which project you would like to be part of and to help and support. One of the new projects that we're doing is uh, we're going to do more brief report that we have here. I think Jenna will be the first one to submit one uh, soon about best um, teaching uh, practices, especially in Eastern uh, Europe and Europe, uh, thinking about uh, Russian propaganda and misinformation and disinformation uh, fights that are happening uh, in Europe. And, um, and there's different ways. If it can be research, it can be advocacy, it can be uh, in providing um, materials of like teaching. So there's a lot of different ways that you can contribute uh, to the community. So that's something that we're going to explore today and we'll talk about it. So before I, I move to the second part or the third part, any question, I'm going to stop sharing. And so you can see each other. Any question that somebody has, I haven't seen the chat yet, so I'm going to look at the chat, but anything that somebody wants to, to go over or ask or before we move to the next part. I just want to say congratulations on all the amazing resources that you provide to everybody. Like this is the most intensive website that I've seen that people have resources and research and that sort of thing. And I think that's very helpful for everybody. So thank you to everybody who's participated. Yeah, thank you. It, it's been a work for several years to try to make sense of all the crazy, amazing materials that do exist because we want people to use it and not just to be buried in a sub sub page somewhere. So. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, okay, so anything else before I stop the recording that should be shared with other people maybe that are interested? Okay, so if you watch the recording, you're welcome to reach out to me or to write to me your motivation and what you would like to contribute. And uh, I hope hopefully we'll see you in July 25th. Um,